Do you want your gadgets to be faster? Wouldn't it be great if your phone could perform tasks more efficiently or your computer could compute much more quickly? The majority of us do, but given the state of technology today, it is unlikely that they will become much faster than they have been for the last decade. The clock rate of single processor cores has stalled at a few gigahertz, making it more difficult to push the limits of the renowned Moore's Law. However, a new invention by IBM might change all that. What are optical circuits? How do they function? And how can they speed up your devices? Join us as we learn about the new optical circuit that is better than every CPU ever made. What do your brain and a computer have in common? Not much, but there are parallels into how the two function. For instance, your brain includes around 100 billion neurons, small switches that allow you to think and remember things, while computers have billions of microscopic brain cells called transistors. The chemical element silicon, which is often found in sand, is used to make the brain cells. However, depending on how you look at it and how much knowledge you have in tech, transistors can be both simple and complex. A transistor is a small electronic component that has two functions. It can act as a switch or an amplifier. As an amplifier, it takes in a small amount of electrical current at one end and sends out a much larger amount of electric current at the other end. Did you know that one of the earliest applications of transistors was in hearing aids? A hearing aid has a small microphone that takes up noises from the environment and converts them into varying electric currents. Then these currents are sent to a transistor which boosts them and sends them to a tiny loudspeaker, making the sounds much louder. Transistors can also act as switches, with a small electric current passing through a section of the transistor, enabling the flow of a much larger current through another section. Or in simpler terms, the small current activates the larger one. This is basically how all computer chips operate. For example, a memory chip contains hundreds of millions or even billions of transistors that can be individually turned on or off. Because each transistor can be in two different states, it can store two different numbers, such as 0 and 1. And by packing billions of transistors onto a chip, it can store billions of zeros and ones, and nearly as many regular numbers and characters too. Silicon, the material used to make transistors, is a semiconductor, which means it rarely conducts electricity, making it neither truly a conductor nor an insulator. But how do transistors work inside your computer? If you put a few transistor switches together, it will form something called a logic gate, which can compare various input currents and give different outputs. Boolean algebra is a type of math that logic gates use to let computers make simple decisions. The explanation doesn't get much easier than that, unless you're intent on creating your own computer. However, there is a problem with transistors. Most people have heard of Moore's Law, which was developed by Gordon Moore, one of the co-founders of Intel, and states that electronic devices double in speed and capability roughly every two years. According to the law, the speed and capabilities of electronic devices should double every two years, and each and every year, tech firms release newer, faster, smarter and better gadgets. But how long can we keep reducing the size of the transistors? But thanks to silicon, which the transistors are constructed of, firms like Intel are already mass-manufacturing transistors that are 14 nanometers across, or only 14 times wider than DNA molecules. The atomic size of silicon is approximately 0.2 nanometers, and modern transistors are made up of around 70 silicon atoms. So the capacity for producing smaller transistors is diminishing. The inescapable reality is that we are approaching the boundary of how small we can make a transistor. So how can we keep improving the output of our devices? This is where optical circuits come into play. An international research team led by IBM and Skoltech made a highly energy efficient optical switch that could replace electronic transistors. This could lead to a new generation of computers that work with photons instead of electrons. The switch requires no cooling and is as fast as 100 trillion operations per second, which is between 100 and 1,000 times faster than today's top-tier commercial transistors. Aside from performance issues, most electrical transistors today use tens of times more energy to switch than those that only use a single electron but do the same job. Power-saving electronic transistors that compete with each other sometimes need big cooling systems, which use electricity and raise operating costs. The new switch can work at room temperature, which circumvents all the other problems. 
In addition to its main function of connecting devices by sending data between them as optical signals, the switch can also act as an amplifier, increasing the power of the incoming laser beam by a factor of up to 23,000. How does an optical transistor function then? The gadget uses two lasers to alternately set its state to zero or one. It just requires a small number of photons in the control beam to switch one stronger laser beam on or off, which is why the gadget is so effective. An incredibly weak laser beam is employed to either turn another brighter laser beam on or off. It only takes a few photons in the control beam, which is why the device is so efficient. The switching happens in a tiny space called a micro-cavity, which is made up of two highly reflected inorganic structures on either side of a 35 nanometer thick organic semiconducting polymer. It is designed in a manner to promote interaction with the material of the cavity by trapping incoming light within for as long as feasible. When the photons in the cavities become strongly linked to the excitons or electron hole pairs, this leads to the production of short-lived exciton polarations, a kind of quasi-particle that is essential for the switch's functioning. When the brighter of the two pump lasers illuminates the switch, it generates thousands of identical quasi-particles in precisely the same place, resulting in the formation of a Bose-Einstein condensate, which serves to store the binary logic of the device, zeros and ones. In order to transition between the two different levels of the device, the research team used a control laser pulse that seeded the condensate prior to the pump laser pulse. This caused an energy transformation from the pump laser, which increased the number of quasi-particles in the condensate. The high amount of particles in there corresponds to the one state of the device. The researchers employed several adjustments to make sure that the power consumption was kept low. First, the efficient switching was aided by the vibrations of the semiconducting polymer molecules. The technique involved aligning the energy difference between the pumped states and the condensate state with the energy of a single molecular vibration in the polymer. Secondly, the group was able to identify the most suitable frequency to calibrate their laser to and establish a fresh approach to measurement that allowed them to detect the condensate in a single shot. Third, the control laser used to create the condensate and its detection procedures were matched in such a manner that the background noise from the device was minimized. This combination of strategies enhanced the signal-to-noise ratio of the device and avoided the excess absorption of energy by the microcavity, which would only cause it to heat up through the movement of its molecules. The fact that silicon can soak up visible light was another problem that the researchers had to deal with. Even though this is good for solar panels, it is not ideal for the waveguide side, where any light that is absorbed would make the signal weaker. Researchers used nanostructures, dubbed high-contrast gratings, to combat the absorption problem. A grating like this has nanometer-sized posts lined together to create a fence that prevents light from escaping. The diameter of the posts is only 115 nanometers, with a spacer position between them in such a way that the light that passes through them cancels out the light that passes in between them. A lot of work needs to be done before the device's total power consumption can be reduced, which is now dominated by the pump laser that keeps the switch on. Some experts believe the perovskite supercrystal materials they're investigating with their partners might help them get there. They have proven to be excellent candidates due to their strong coupling to light matter, which results in a strong collective quantum response in the form of superfluorescence. We'd like to know your opinion about the new optical circuit in the comments section below.